It was a late game, so if you went to bed early, I understand. You may look at the final score and say, 35-13, well, at least Alabama didn't cover the spread. Seven-footer Yudoka Azebuki. Just for comparisons, I brought with me some assistants here. Cassie Nall is five feet tall. Five feet tall. John Becker is six feet tall. Six feet tall. Yudoka Azebuki <laughs> is seven feet tall. This is, this is the first swing I've taken in like months. Let's see how it is. <laughs> yeah, Beth, in Jeremy Pruitt's contract with Tennessee, there are 31 different instances of how he could be fired for cause. Pruitt's termination letter details six in particular. We're going to touch on the main ones here. Let's take about 120 seconds to talk about Tennessee recruiting. Incurred an injury dealing with weights in the weight room, so he stitched up in the left hand doing all this. Oh, it's not So essentially, Grant Williams had a less than 1% chance of making 23 free throws in a row. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and give the Tennessee Vols some Christmas love. Yes, bring the Christmas music. We have officially started week six of the high school football season. I like to think pretty cool, calm, collected. I stray from hyperbole. But this, honest to goodness, might be the wildest high school football game I've ever seen. Phones in your pocket, seatbelts on, hands and feet in the cabin. Ooh, this is a ride. So I rolled up at the very end of the first quarter. There were already three turnovers, a 90-plus kick return touchdown. It's 21-14. William Blunt in the red zone. Handoff. No. Adam Matthews with the reverse. He throws the quarterback. Trey Clemmer dives. Touchdown, Govs. It's 21-20. The extra point is blocked. That's going to be important. More govs. Seth Cooper gets the call, and Seth Cooper says, I can't talk right now. I'm busy. He scores. Touchdown, William Blunt, 29-24. Right before halftime, sophomore kicker Job Matosian from 51 yards out. What a leg. Oh, I love a good kick. But Sevier County comes battling back. Smokey Bears block an extra point in the fourth quarter to force overtime, 45 all. In OT, William Blunt scores a touchdown, but fakes the point after, doesn't get it. Sevier County scores. Giuseppe Kanaka nails the go-ahead PAT, 52-51 in overtime. Smokey Bears win. You see a Caleb McKenzie touchdown there on your screen because I had to leave before we got to overtime. I hate when that happens, man. Oh, what a great game. Sevier County wins. There's a saying at Knoxville Martial Arts Academy. Sure, I say all the time that Matt doesn't lie. It reveals who you are and who you could become. Find a spot at the end of one of these lines. Eric Turner has coached several athletes, men and women, who have reached the heights of UFC and Bellator, fighting professionally. You know, we'd say the mat is an altar. Whatever you sacrifice on it, you'll get back. If you sacrifice one life on it, you'll get a different life back. Next in line at the altar, Dre Miley. You gotta love all of that sacrifice and you gotta love all the good and all the bad with it. That's really what it's all about. It's just loving the process. It's a process that started 12 years ago near the border of Monroe and Loudoun County. Reed Springs Road. No, it's definitely not something to forget. In early 2009, at 17, Miley was in the passenger seat with his friend driving. A younger cousin and brother were in the back seat heading to a game. The driver swerved. The car hit a tree. Miley reached back. And I had caught them with my left hand, just like this. And then as I slammed them back down, I turned, my face went into the dashboard. His face fractured, his left eye destroyed. It used to be a negative thing for me to be like, I have one eye, my life is over. But now I believe like it happened for a reason. Like it had to happen for a reason. So no one gets their eye taken out just because. Months later, it was his family, his friends, and his fighting that pulled him through. He started training with Turner that same year, which turned to amateur fighting, which turned to professional fighting. So far, I see it as like, I am the only one-eyed fighter out there actually doing it. And not necessarily just doing it, it's more of like, I'm winning. Just getting in the cage has been difficult. Athletic commissions and boards have been hesitant to approve him because of his eye. Most fighters, they just fight another guy, but Dre's fighting the state, and he's fighting the commissioners, and he's fighting sanctioning organizations. And after he wins all those fights, then he's got to fight in the cage, and he goes out there and wins that fight too. So, you know, Dre's the epitome of what a fighter should be. You don't win all the time, but you fight every single time, and Dre's done that a million times over. Fight. Just keep fighting. 
know, I have three boys and I want to show them and I want to show the other kids and everybody else who has something going on with them or they may not be like, oh, I can't do that because X, Y, Z. It's like, well, this guy's doing it, so you have no excuse. So try to inspire everybody to be like, go for what you want because the only person can tell you no is yourself. You got to be stubborn whatever you're doing in life. In Knoxville, Luis Fernandez. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. For Carlos Lopez, it may as well just be one word over and over again. That's my family. There's not a day that goes by that my brother and I don't speak or that my mother and I don't speak. Carlos, Omar, and Arlie's story didn't start in East Tennessee, but it's where they call home. We're going to go back to the beginning, man. Uh, I grew up in Venezuela. I was born December 12, 1989. His mother worked with the National Police Force in the country. In the late 90s, as Hugo Chavez rose to power, she decided it was time for her family to leave Venezuela for a new opportunity. I want to take you guys to a place that whatever dream you have, you can make a reality. Two years after my mother made that sacrifice to find a better life for my brother and myself, we ended up in good old Seymour, Tennessee. That's not where the story ends, though. You know, the American dream and, and what we're living today is waking up every single day and realize where you could have been. Where they could have been and where they are now. After playing soccer in Venezuela, Lopez got the opportunity to kick on the Seymour High School football team. He earned a scholarship to play under Ken Sparks at Carson Newman, graduating early and transferring to Middle Tennessee State, even kicking briefly in the Arena Football League. But that wasn't his dream. Nice. That's it. Now, Lopez is a coach at Alcoa, a Spanish teacher at Northview Academy, and a father to a beautiful baby girl named Nella. You ask her, Nella, where are you from? She'll say, Papa, I'm 50 50. <laughs> she said, I'm 50 50. I said, What does that mean? I'm 50 Venezuela and I'm 50 Tennessee. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? That's the Lion King. For Nella, and for his family, Lopez wants so much more. Better! There's a lot of things that Hispanics in this area that we're not supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be having executive jobs. We're not supposed to be becoming professors. We're not supposed to be getting master's degrees. That's the American dream for us, to come over here and you know, be above the norm. That's what my mother wanted from my brother and myself. And as he rises above the norm with the Alcoa football team, with his students at Northview Academy, with his brother, his mother, his daughter. Family is always there. I've been in a lot of places, Chief. There's no place like East Tennessee. Venezuela is my origin. Venezuelan is my nationality. But East Tennessee, Sevier County, this is my family. Every time I look at those coaches that I come over here, the way that I greet them is not hello, it's not what's up, it's not how you doing, coach. It's hola, familia.